I'm with a local expert at a game reserve in Jordan. To get vital gene samples, we tranquilized a white oryx. But he's fighting the drugs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. All right, let me just get this data. No one in the This thing is so powerful. Oryx can kill lions. If we don't control his horns, we could be dead in seconds. That's all right. Okay. Oh, so incredibly strong. I'm gonna get my samples. Really quick. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, it's okay. He's in really good condition. So one of the things to notice about Oryx is they obviously have these long, slender horns, and they almost look straight, but they actually do curve back a bit, and they have these extremely powerful necks, and they use those horns as weapons. And the other thing is they are really, really compact. As far as antelope go, they are tiny, tiny little animals, and that's obviously because there's a limited amount of food and moisture on the desert. This guy's actually waking up. Yeah. So what I want to do is get these samples as quickly as possible yeah. so we can let this kid go. Okay. You're all right. These butterfly cats are phenomenal. Okay. It goes in the jugular and can just basically draw it out. It's really, really dark. And usually what this is a sign of is, is dehydration, or at least not a ton of moisture. And these guys are constantly fighting dehydration. Every Oryx in Jordan descended from the same 11 ancestors introduced just 30 years ago. So researchers want to monitor the herd's DNA to make sure new generations are not developing mutations. That's that done. So you guys ready? This guy's hard to handle, even semi-conscious, and the reversal drug will have him fully awake within minutes. So we need to back off quickly. I think. Yep. All right, everyone go. Just make sure. We don't want to alarm the animal. We just want to make sure it's up. And we'll actually move off. What are we going to do? Oh, it moves off. The guy's going to be a little bit groggy, but within the next minute to five minutes, all those other drugs will start kicking in, and the animal's going to be fine. Most large mammals I work with are endangered and losing numbers rapidly, so it's a pleasure to see a repopulation effort working well. There's a porcupine. Look at that. These guys are called the crested porcupines. Oh, they're basically big rodents, and they've evolved to have these spiky hairs. And a lot of the locals believe they can actually shoot these quills, and that's not true. And I'll just back up into you and hit you with those quills. Once the quills in, it's really hard to get out because you've got these little microbarbs that stick in your flesh. So this guy doesn't have an elaborate venom or anything we need, and we'd actually have to sedate him to get blood. So we can let him be. He's so stinking cute. I'll move east to try one more time to find the Holy Land's most endangered lizard, the Iranian monitor. One of the best ways to look for animals out in the desert is to look for agricultural areas. What happens is they irrigate these areas very heavily and that will pull in lizards and frogs and amphibians and that obviously attracts the snakes and monitors. The desert looks barren, but it's home to hundreds of reptile species, so we need to stay alert. Dude, 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 dude. It's a snake. Look at that, it's a Montpellier snake. <laughs> this thing is awesome. One of the things that they'll do yeah, is they'll actually spread a narrow hood, just like a mambo cobra. You can see, ooh, that's what it's doing now. It has that narrow little hood. Oh. Who says snakes don't chase you? <laughs> And these guys, oh, these guys just thrive on the heat. They absolutely love hot weather. And they're basically solar powered. So the hotter they get, the faster they move, and the more trouble you're in. Ooh. Hey. These snakes are always on the move, always eating, very, very physical. And because of that, they need to eat a lot. It seeks out the animals that live near the agricultural areas, mice and lizards. And they'll even eat other snakes. Look at that. And you see that big, big eye. The snake's not even flicking its tongue. It's just following me with its eye. Very, very visual predators. And I don't want to risk a bite from one of these guys. Most of the rear fang snakes are thought to be not deadly until someone gets bitten and dies. 
and then you change your mind and say they're deadly. So I don't want to be the first person to figure out that the venom is quite bad. It's basically seeking out the shade underneath me. You know, it's expended a lot of energy and it's getting pretty warm. So before I work with it, what I'm going to do is just get some water onto it. That way it can drink if it needs to. And also that will cool it down while we work with it. Just make sure this guy's nice and cool. So what I want to do from him is try and see if I can get any venom. Ooh, hey little buddy. Rear fang snakes have grooved back teeth to deliver venom that typically helps immobilize and digest prey. What I want to try and do is get as much of his body underneath me as possible just so it's out of the sun. If you look at this guy's mouth structure, he's got four rows of teeth on the top jaw and that's his venom fang there. This guy has a hematoxic venom that causes excess bleeding. So what I'm going to do is just try and pop the micro pipettes on the fang, see if there's any available venom. Because of the way it attacks blood cells, it could have potential for preventing strokes by breaking up blood clots. So I'll send a sample to a research lab. So this is a decent venom yield from a rear fang snake or colubrid because if you think about some of the snakes that can be deadly, the amount of venom that they need to kill you is less than you can see with naked eyes. So that's actually a pretty decent amount. Cool. So I just want to get this into a specimen container as quickly as possible. Things denature in this desert heat so quickly. The nice thing about these, these micro pipettes is not only is it used for collecting venom, you can actually store it in there as well, but obviously they break because they're glass. So you put it into a micro container like that, you break it off, and that's your venom. And then get that put away. The last thing I want to do to this little kid is return him to where we found him. Where was it? It's like over here. So he was sitting over there. All right. So let's just get him in there. Chisel, buddy. Working in the desert sun takes a toll on the samples and the crew, but we'll press on to try to complete the last goal of the mission. Getting to the top of these mountains is hard work. <laughs> the weird thing about this landscape is it's hard to, to get a solid footing on this. Like that. It's literally like being on Mars. Dude, 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 right over there. Damn it! It's a lizard! Ow, ow, ow! Dude, dude stop, 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 stop. Look at that! This is the Iranian monitor, and these things are so rare that, look at that. They've actually been offered the same protection as a panda. Absolutely stunning and perfectly adapted for this desert environment. Hey there, buddy. And what they try and do is make themselves as big as possible. Ah. It's 100 degrees in the desert of Jordan, but I couldn't be happier. After days of searching, right over there, I've finally found an Iranian monitor lizard. They're extremely rare and absolutely fearless. Ah. Grab him, grab him, grab him, grab him. So he ran away, but he actually nicked his tongue in that aggression display, and he's just bleeding a little bit, which is not a big deal. These guys are very, very rugged and actually built for an extremely tough lifestyle. And obviously living out in the desert, these things, oh, geez, look at that. This thing is gnarly. And the thing with monitors is once they bite, they don't usually let go too easily. One of the ways to do it is basically to let them go so they think they're in charge and then they'll let go. Oh, let me get them off my bag. Look at the size of those chompers. He's got monster teeth and if he bites onto you, dude, that's, that's a serious, serious bite. This is the largest reptile in Jordan. Very, very powerful legs, explosive energy, and a far more developed cardiovascular system than a snake. So they can have a lot more stamina than snakes do. And these guys are feared by the locals. People sometimes will actually kill them and eat them because they think that they carry immunity, which is true as well. They, they are immune to snake bites and will eat venomous snakes, but if you eat a monitor, it's not gonna make you immune to snake bites. 
Only until recently we thought they were totally harmless and we found out now that they do possess venom. And that's only happened in the last two or three years. And to my knowledge, Iranian monitors have not been milked. So basically what I'm gonna do is pop a little test tube cap into his mouth, emulate a bite and then try and collect the venom. Grab him behind the head. Look at him, he's watching my hand. That was close. That wasn't funny. All right, little buddy. So what I'm gonna do is just pop this into his mouth so he has something to chew on. Look at that. Another thing that, that's really cool about monitors is their third eye. I'll find something to point with. So that there is a little photosensory organ. It's basically a see-through scale. It looks like it has green dots in the middle. And that's a big part of how they figure out hibernation and seasons and all that. It's basically a third eye just on the top of the head and they can see exactly where the sun is and how long the day is. So he's actually getting a decent amount of venom in his jaws already. The thing I've found works best with little monitors is capillary tubes and it's dual purpose. They act as a collection device and as a storage device, especially when it's small volumes that you're dealing with. You wanna get every single drop you can. You can see there's actually a, a drop right there. And basically what I'm gonna do is just put the, the capillary tube right where the teeth are. You can see the venom filling up already. Basically, this guy would be a donor for the Venomous Lizard Project, which basically looks at the, the venom of all lizards. And, and the more we're looking at lizards, the more we're discovering a lot of them have a venom of some sort. So basically put it in the micro retainer and just break off the glass. So what we'll do next is this gets put on ice and sent off to be sequenced. And to my knowledge, this is the first time Iranian monitor venom will be sequenced. So we'll know exactly what is in this venom and exactly what this animal uses in its venom arsenal. All right. It's a thrill to collect what might be the first sample of its kind. I'm not sure what research applications this guy's venom could have, but other monitor venoms have shown great potential for human blood thinning medications. So the last thing I want to do is to give this guy a little bit of water just basically just give him some water. If he wants to drink, he will. Basically, this is just to cool the little kid down. It's definitely the coolest monitor I've ever found. These are really the holy grail amongst monitor lovers. Really, really endangered and obviously absolutely gorgeous. All right, little monkey, you can go anytime you want. Once he realizes I'm not holding on to him anymore, he's just gonna run away, which is exactly what I want. Jordan has been a land of extremes with challenging habitat, stark beauty, and incredible biodiversity. I tracked a rugged striped hyena right. whose blood sample is now being researched by an international pharmaceutical lab. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right there, right there, right there. And a magnificent white oryx ooh. whose DNA samples showed healthy gene variety. I found two awesome snakes. Look right in there. A false horned viper and a Montpellier, Ooh. whose venom samples are in research programs at a Swiss pharmaceutical company. You look at the color of it. I crossed the brutal but incredibly beautiful Jordanian desert to find an Iranian monitor, whose venom sample is being analyzed by an American research lab. And along the way, I've been privileged to encounter some of the highly adapted and extraordinarily diverse wildlife of Jordan. My name's Donald Schultz, and this is not a stunt. This is my job. Find out more about my work, Venom, and the animals of Wild Recon at animalplanet.com slash wildrecon.